Okay, Calc 1 students, welcome to the lesson for Section 2.4 on Continuity. I'm doing this in my office. Don't have my guitar. All I have is this little thing. So here's my introduction. Okay, that's the best I can do. Sorry, no guitar. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about continuity, next important topic in, uh, in calculus. So basically the idea, we're going to look at continuity at a specific value of x. I think where I'm going to start this actually is I'm going to go down to this example two, one and just sort of show you what we mean by a graph being discontinuous at a point. So the basic idea here is, you know, you have breaks on the graph. You can think of a function being discontinuous where there's breaks. Or you can think of it like this, uh, just to start with. Uh, if you have to lift your pencil somewhere to draw a graph, then it's discontinuous. Like right here, I would have to lift my pencil to get that dot right there. So what we'd say here is at negative 2, we are discontinuous. There's a break in the graph. Also at negative 1, you're discontinuous because you would draw, you'd lift your pencil to go there, then you're continuous. At one, you have an asymptote. You would have to lift your pencil to draw this part here. So these are the places that this function is discontinuous, okay? Now, uh, it's continuous everywhere else. Continuous just means that uh, for every single x value, there's a y value, and there's no breaks whatsoever in here. So all these places that I'm highlighting in yellow that's going to be where we're continuous. So we write this as an interval, so it would kind of go like this. So we would kind of do our interval like this. It would be from here to here. We would have a negative infinity until we get to negative 2. Okay, then you usually have a union for the next part, and then the next part would go like this. From negative 2 to negative 1, we'd be continuous in there, so we would write that as an interval. And then again, we would say from negative 1 all the way to the asymptote would be another one. So we would say negative 1 to 1. And then finally, we would close off by saying uh, starting from 1 to infinity, that would be continuous there. All right. So the idea is notice that you're discontinuous at negative 2. So that's using parentheses in your interval. You're discontinuous at negative 1 and you're discontinuous at 1. Okay, so that's how you write that out. I like to start that way because students usually have no trouble looking at where a graph is discontinuous. Okay, if there's a break in the graph, like a hole, an asymptote, then you're going to be discontinuous at that particular value. Okay, so back up here at the top, it is a little bit more specific. So the question on this is, we're interested in what's happening as x goes to 2. So we're asking the question, are we continuous at x equals 2? Is there a break in the graph? It doesn't appear there's any no bubble, no asymptote, so we would say, yes, we're continuous at x equals 2. Okay. So what I'm wanting to show you with this is two things are happening on this. First of all, this is a two-sided limit. So notice that as we go from the left, we're approaching a y value of 4. Our right-hand limit, if we're coming to the right, we're also going to approach that y value of 4. So the value of that two-sided limit as x goes to 2 is 4. The other thing is that's important is f of 2 is 4. That just means that if x is 2, y is 4. And that's what that point right there is, is that's the point 2, 4. So the idea is the value of the limit is the same as the function value. Okay, so that's kind of the key thing. So that's continuous, all right? So I'm just kind of showing you how the limit works when you're discontinuous. Okay, this is the same situation, a little bit different. You're going to be looking at, is this continuous at 2? So we just ask, is there a break in the graph? Yeah, there's a bubble. If you were going to draw this curve, you would have to go like that, lift your pencil, draw a bubble, lift your pencil, do that. Well, there's a break in the graph. So we would say we are not continuous. Continuous at x equals 2. Okay, so what happens with this one is the left-hand limit 
is still going to 4. The right-hand limit is still going to 4. So the value of the two side limits 4, regardless of the fact that there's an open bubble there. But we're undefined. And since we're undefined, that's what makes this discontinuous. Anytime you're undefined at a specific x value, you have to be discontinuous because there has to be either an asymptote or like uh, an open bubble there. Okay, same thing here. We're looking at x equals 0. So, yeah, we would have to lift our pencil. We would have to go like this, draw a bubble, lift our pencil, like that. So what happens on this one is the limit does not exist. And anytime the limit does not exist, you have to be discontinuous. And again, you're not defined, so you cannot be continuous. That's the idea. So what we're going to try to do is kind of get the, uh, the idea of the definition of continuity down, all right? All right, so pause if you need to pause. I'm going to move on to the next thing here. Uh, a couple of good things to show students a little bit is think about how functions uh, can model certain things in the real world. Like, for instance, temperature. The idea is at every point in time, there is a specific temperature. You would consider if you graphed like a 24-hour period of how temperature changed, you would expect it to be continuous. In other words, it's not going to be like 1 o'clock, and it's going to be 90 degrees, and then it's not going to be 1 o'clock and 0, 0, 0, 0, 1th of a, one of a, month, one of a second, and it's going to drop to minus 32. If it does, man, something is seriously going wrong on planet Earth. So that is a, uh, that is a continuous function everywhere. This is a good example of something that has some discontinuous parts of the function would be this. Okay, so with this one, what you would kind of have is this is inventory in a warehouse. So for instance, your inventory is always whole numbers. So inventory just means like how many items do you have in inventory in your business or whatever. Well, okay, now you have maybe 150. At the next point in time, you've got jump all the way up to 500 because a new shipment came in or whatever. But anyway, that would be something you would expect to jump around. So you would have some places in that graph where it's discontinuous. So that would be a graph you want to kind of think about of how there would be discontinuities in that particular situation. Okay, so uh, what I'll look at next is the definition of continuity. And what we want to try to get settled here is it is to know mathematically why something's discontinuous. So these are the things you have to check. These are the three conditions in order for some or for a, a function to be continuous at a point. Now we're doing at a point right now. So all three have to hold. So the limit has to exist. What that would mean is, well, the, the two-sided limit has to come together the same place. Okay, so you have to have that. Now, you couldn't just have an open bubble because you have to be defined. So the function itself has to be defined as well. So the limit's got to exist. Function's got to defi be defined. But the clincher is kind of this part right here. Okay, so basically what this is saying is the value. I would write this down in words. The value of the two-sided limit Uh, must be the same as the function value. Okay, that's usually the one that's the hardest for students to comprehend, but once you start looking at examples, then that I think I'll be fairly clear to you. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, we're going to say uh, the next uh, the next thing is a function's continuous on an interval uh, if it's continuous at each point on the interval. Okay, so if we're kind of looking at the examples we just did, well, you are continuous where in these intervals because you're continuous everywhere in that interval. So everywhere in between negative one and one, okay, well you're nice and smooth and connected, so you're continuous everywhere in the middle. So that's what it means by continuous on a, on an interval. Okay, so what we're going to kind of do on this is, is look at these conditions here. So remember, you always look at, is the function defined? Does the limit exist? And does the value of the limit 
is it the same as the value of the function? If all three conditions hold, then yes, it's continuous at that point. So let's uh, take a look at this then. So first of all, the question is, we're interested in x equals 3 on this particular problem. Okay, so the question is, is the function defined? Yes, okay, because this point right here is the point 3, 1. So yeah, this, it, when x is 3, you have a y value, so it's defined. We know that y value. Next question is, does the two-sided limit exist? Well, if we go to the left-hand side, it looks like that approaches 1. If we go on the right-hand side and do the right-hand limit, it looks like that approaches 4. So it looks like the limit does not exist. So that's why it's discontinuous, is because that limit does not exist. Okay, So there's got to be a break in the graph. Now this last one says this. Now we know that f of 3 is 1. When x is 3, y is 1. Well, the limit didn't exist. So those things are not the same. I mean, it does not exist. It can't be one. Okay, so that is not is not going to hold either. Okay, so generally, if something's discontinuous, one of these three conditions will not hold, but maybe all of them won't hold. It's possible that you can have that, but at least one of them can't. It has to be no. Okay, so the next one we'll kind of look at this one. All right, so we got this graph. We're interested in. Uh, x, e x approaches 2. So are, is it defined? Do we know what y is when x is 2? Yeah, we know y is 1. So it looks like, again, you have the point 2, 1, so that's a yes. Okay, next question is, does the two-sided limit exist? So if we go from the left-hand side, when we get close to 2, we're getting close to 4. When we do the right-hand limit, as we go from the right, we're going to the same place. So yes, the two-sided limit exists. All right, so what's going to happen on this is this. Okay, first of all, the value of this limit is 4. So the left-hand limit goes to 4, right-hand goes to 4. So that limit would be 4, but the value of that function is 1. So those things are not equal, so that's no. Okay, what happens is the reason it's discontinuous is because the function moved from here down there. Sometimes we call that a removable discontinuity. So that's why. Okay. Okay. The next one, I think this uh, didn't come out real well in my PDF. That was supposed to be nice and connected kind of like that. So that's how this function goes. So this one we're interested in x equals 2. Okay. So the question is, is f of 2 defined? In other words, if x is 2, do you know what y is? No, there's not a solid dot anywhere there, so that's a no. So that's why that thing is <coughs> discontinuous. If you go from the left, the left-hand limit looks like it approaches maybe 7. Looks like the right-hand limit approaches 7, so it looks like the two-sided limit exists. But the, what the deal is, the value of this limit is uh, looks like 7, but f of 2 is doesn't exist. So those are not the same, so that doesn't hold. So what you want to kind of think about is in, it's usually pretty easy to tell if there's a break in the graph. I think students are usually pretty clear on that. But what you're trying to do is make sure that you're confident on what, which of the three conditions don't hold. Okay, Some, And it only takes one of those conditions to not hold and then for it, in order for it to be discontinuous. Okay, so pause on that and think about that a little bit. This is something usually I kind of test students over. I give a graph, like to see if you can uh, identify which conditions are correct and uh, hold and which ones don't. Okay, so this one I'm gonna I'm gonna make a little change on this. So we're going to go to the next page, and I'm gonna let you do a little work on this. I don't like the way I wrote this. So I'm gonna maybe X out on uh, condition one. Let's kind of write it the way we did here. Let's just kind of write condition one uh, is uh, f of, uh, is the function defined? So in other words, we'll just say like is f of a defined, yes or no? Condition two, we want to look at this way. Okay, does the limit as x approaches a of f of x exist. 
Okay, yes or no. I kind of write these things kind of like as negatives. I don't like the way I did that. And then number three, does the limit as x approaches a of f of x, is it equal to the function value at f of a? So what I want you to do on this is identify a point where it's discontinuous, find the breaks, and then just go through each of these conditions the way I've written it up here and put yes or no. So I want to see if you can identify all that. Okay, so I'm going to pause and then let you go ahead and do that. Okay, so go ahead and see if you got what I got. So let's see what we got here. Um, so let's see. Well, these are the places we're going to find. You're, uh, are, you're discontinuous at negative 4, negative 2, 1, and 3. So uh, at negative 4, the function is defined. f of negative 4 is 3. Okay. The limit does not exist. The left and right-hand limit don't come together, so, it does, so the limit doesn't exist. And if the limit doesn't exist, then condition 3 has to be no, because the function value can't be the same thing as a limit that doesn't exist, so that's no. Okay, and then the next one, x uh, negative 2, let's see, is, is this defined? No, there's a bubble, so you're undefined there. Does the limit exist on part B? Yeah, the value of that limit is going to 5. Left and right-hand limit both go to 5. And then does the value of the limit equal the function value? No, because there's no function value. Okay, so that's a no. And then we look at 1. Uh, is the function defined? No, there's a bubble. There's no solid dot. Does the limit exist? No. Two-sided limit doesn't come together. And therefore, since the limit doesn't exist, then 3 can't, be, can't hold either. The last one's kind of the one that sometimes is the trickiest for students. The, the function is defined. f of 3 is 1, so you do have this point 3, 1. And the y value of that, that function value is 1. The limit exists. The left-hand limit goes to 3. The right-hand limit goes to 3. So you can kind of see that closing in. As you close in on 3, y closes in on 3. So the limit exists, and it's 3. But the thing is, they're not the same. The value of the limit is 3, but the value of the function is 1, so it's condition 3 that does not hold. And again, on that third condition, the idea is it would be continuous if that solid dot wasn't there, if the solid dot was there. Okay, so what we have is we have what we call a removable discontinuity that's been removed from the graph, is what we call that. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's kind of what I want you to work a little bit on that. That's kind of a good exercise to help you understand the three conditions of continuity. We we'll want to know the technical mathematical talk on that. Okay, so these are the three types of uh, discontinuity. Okay, so I'm going to close off the video there. I'm trying to do these in parts that kind of go with my Roman numerals. So what I've introduced you to now is just the three conditions of continuity. Do that, and then the next part will be the three types of discontinuity. Okay.